Welcome back fellow time travelers and comic book aficionados. I want to present to you a rare and unique book from my time traveling journeys that is from Charlton Comics. I always enjoy the different genres and varieties that Charlton had to offer, but this book is rather unique. It is a promotional book from a candy company that brought us our favorites such as Almond Joy and Mounds and even the Cadbury Bunny with the chocolate and caramel eggs. After all, at the time of this recording, we're near Easter time and chocolates go very well with what the hey, even comics. So this book I want to present to you is Peter Paul's 4-in-1 Jumbo Comic Book. And it features 132 pages in this square bound book. And it's quite a delight as it takes and puts together four Charlton comics from the end of 1952. And it includes Racket Squad in Action, my personal favorite, Space Adventures, Crime and Justice, and even Space Western, which is a more rare and hard to come by Charlton book. The covers are superimposed onto the front here, and the action and the stories are inside the book. So one lucky a uh, person would receive this in the mail. So it's a mail order book, direct mail, with the postage and the address affixed right there. So right here, this is from uh, Cotton Grove, Oregon. So talk about coast to coast because we know Charlton Comic was published in Connecticut and then it even made its way all the way to the west to Oregon. What's interesting to note that uh, Peter Paul's candy company is in Naugatuck, Connecticut, and in Derby, Connecticut, we have Charlton Comics. So within the same state, it only makes sense that a candy company paired up with Charlton Comics to promote the candies in the back ad right here, but also giving some great stories for the reader to enjoy. Between candy and comics, I can't think of a better combination. This book offers full color stories from artists that include Frank Frollo, Art Capello, also Dick Giordano, who we know became the editor of DC Comics as we enjoy Batman and the hero genre. But here in 1953, when this book came out, it featured stories from the year before, 1952, and almost in succession, as we have here uh, this book coming out in September, October, November, and December, but of different books, not the same books in succession. So, we, so let's jump into some action-packed pages and take a look ourselves. The covers of the four stories that we'll take a look in a moment uh, happen to be Racket Squad in Action, number three, September 1952, and then in October 1952, another number three was Space Adventure, both from Frank Frollo, with the action and colors right there. The second uh, two books will be Crime and Justice by Lou Morales, who also did the first issue cover for Space Adventures, and Space Western, Stan Campbell, well known for his Western theme, as we see here. And it's interesting to note, these are all from 1952, September, October, here in November, and December. Opening up the comic on the inside cover, we have the process by which coconuts are grown and harvested. After all, Almond Joy and Mounds, a favorite candy of many, consists of coconut. And right away, we get into the action of one of the four books that includes uh, blackmail, gambling, swindlers, and that's Racket Squad in action. And it takes place on a gambling ship, which is interesting. And they're trying to find a mystery and solve a, a racket going on. So that the story's premise is solving mysteries and kind of even fighting and thwarting racketeers in this time. It kind of reminds me of Iron Man, Tales of Suspense, with the gambling ship of Magia, and kind of wonder if uh, any of that influenced uh, Tony Stark's adventure later on. 
in the 60s, as this is from the early 50s. Here's another story, Find the Lady, uh, Suspense and Detective. After all, we're still in Racket Squad. And there are about seven stories in this one comic of four. So in combination, if we have six to seven stories, we have about 28 in the book overall. The colors are great. You can see the design here, the restaurant, the concealment of what's happening. Uh, hook, line, and sucker, another story right there. Here they are in the bowling alley, hanging out. So interesting uh, detail, even the shoe in the right-hand corner, there's a lot of uh, even background detail that's faded in blue and black, while the main detail is in living colors. So that's a really neat contrast. The artwork here even shows some of the background, again, in blue and black. And the artists involved include Frank Frollo, Dick Giordano, and Stan Campbell, all creating these great stories. We're even still in Racket Squad in action with this title right here. Looks like a magic act. And behind the curtain, lurking around, is trying to reveal the mysteries uh, happening right there. So just like that, from one story finishing up on the left-hand side, we get into Rec Clive and the Space Officers with Space Adventures number three. Dick Giordano artwork here, Art Capello, with the swirling planets and galaxy in the background. Just pause and take a look right here, just of all the panels, exploration, and adventure simultaneously happening. I love the, the back shadows of the celestial body right there. You have the light and the dark right into here, which is really neat the uh, spacemen planning their next journey and what to do. And that's what, for me, made Space Adventures a lot of fun because it also explored an unseen frontier, and artfully so. Who can't deny rockets uh, flying through the air? And the story unfolds here. So just great artwork, uh, Dick Giordano, Art Capello, with uh, Space Adventures. Also, uh, six stories featured inside here, mostly with Rex Clive right in the center. And look at the costume. Look at the design and detail. And that actually ends one of the stories as we jump into the next one. As we flip the page, we get the two pages of text. This allowed books to be mailed at a cheaper rate because it had wording inside. So that's how comic bypass that. The Cloud Ships of Mag Magonia. Very interesting. I like how they call it Cloud Ship. So just some great artwork and again space rockets and visors and television screens happening right there. It's just kind of uh, a precursor to Star Trek. This came way before that and a little bit after the time of Flash Gordon and Buck Rogers. So we have that going on there. Of course, this shows about time traveling, and we have the Time Skipper travels to ancient Rome. The Space Adventures did have a short run of the Time Skipper. So just some great artwork to be had. Now we're into Crime and Justice. This is the third book in the series. Yeah, Crime and Justice featured the cover by Lou Morales, and we have stories here that include Mr. and Mrs. Chase, Dead Justice, Radio Patrol, and it's uh, very fun. And some of the titles include Mark of the Monster, so you definitely have your, your thrillers and your detective stories happening here. You can see the conversation, the investigation that characterizes this book, including the great 1950s automobiles. Just look at that. It could be the front of a Bel Air or a different car, even the back. Always has to be rainy. If you're ever doing detective or crime and justice comics, you have to add the rain in there. And also talking to the perpetrators and trying to get to the bottom of things. But look at the color choice, how here we have red on the left 
and then the officers in blue really gives a kind of a stage appearance of cinema in these great uh, comic books right there. Look at that. That's the monster in disguise. The police are baffled and trying to figure it out. And of course they do in typical fashion. Run, Killer, Run, another story here. We have Stan Campbell actually signing this one here. Stan Campbell is also known for great artwork in Black Fury, uh, Lash LaRue, and other Westerns. So he really picks up on some of those Western themes, including a locomotive, which I think kind of goes with the Wild West. It's just look and appreciate these colors. We have the four color printing process in Derby, Connecticut, as Charlton Comics had everything in-house, from writers to artists to even the printing production. And Charlton, although it was a lesser budget compared to their titan competition of uh, National Comics and Marvel or Atlas Comics, they held their own. Uh, they really did with some of the colors and stories. And some early works before uh, Ditko was with uh, Alice and Marvel is featured in Charlton. The Racket Action comic, Steve Ditko actually makes an appearance in issue number 11. So you can see here at the Sign of the Times, we have the telephones, smoking of the pipe, really 1950s. Again, just this is the second or third appearance of such automobiles right there from the 50s. So this is truly a time-traveling expedition. Look at this uh, color choice right away. Now we're jumping into space western comics. And just look at this clever choice of division of the panel. The circle and just like rays of the sun have these different uh, little vignettes right there. And look at the rocket. Space Western, we have the cowboy from the past and the future of space. Really makes for a great uh, juxtaposition. This is the jinx of the Black Ridge Ranch. Here we have those elements again. Stan Campbell really taking the helm of this 4-in-1 jumbo comic from Peter and Paul. Another Peter Paul comic. And we have here the wagon and the jeep going off near the cliff just avoiding tipping over and if you're a kid and you received this in the mail this was a definite treat space western had a very limited run i think i believe up to six books in total and again this artwork trying not to let my thumb hide it is tremendous very great as the story unfolds. So they did save the best for last. Personally, I think uh, Space Western has a lot of great graphics as well. And Peter Paul promoting their candies also had some special gift to provide, including a locket, ring, wallet, and even an ID bracelet. Back in the day, if the ID bracelet was always a proper and charming way to introduce yourself as you shook hands and it showed your name on on your wrist which is something you don't see in this current time but the candy is the best we have to thank Thelma Putman for ordering this great book back in the day I hope that she enjoyed it and passed it along maybe to her brothers or like the space adventure and her, herself and maybe her parents as we have here 10 big pieces of candy. We have some different varieties there. The ad in the back is uh, discontinued. This might be from the aftermarket from when it was sold again, if it was sold to uh, a book company to sell. Masterpieces in candy. Peter Paul with the 4-in-1 Jumbo comic book number one. There was a second book slated to be published but it never came into fruition and it was not public. So this is the first and only of this type of book with four Charlton Great. So which is your favorite candy for Easter? What candies do you enjoy? Leave a comment below if you're a fan of the Reese's Buttercup and those candy 
uh, eggs with uh, peanut butter. If you're a fan of the Cadbury Bunny, also the ones that have a hard shell with chocolate in the middle, or if you just enjoy Peeps, let me know in the comments below, or if you remember Peter Paul Candy. As we part ways in the rift of time, I leave you with a final comic, and that is uh, Easter with Mother Goose. This is from 1946. It's a dull four-color issue, number 103. And the cover is very nostalgic and vintage and very adorable, if I may add, with the Easter Bunny and a little chicky representing spring and renewal and all good things. Uh, the back cover also has a nice purple uh, frame and coloration as we have here the uh, looks to be a rooster maybe a hen uh, and actually a hen because they do lay eggs and just great walt kelly artwork inside so a lot of different stories just little vignettes they're kind of spread apart on the pages so unlike the comics that we saw in the foreign one, these are wider, not too densely packed, and meant for a younger audience to enjoy. So great uh, covers, Mother Goose right there, little rabbit, some dialogue, very cute to uh, read and share with a young lad. Goldilocks in the baby bear's basket, so very interesting. Kind of reminds me of some of the Lev Gleason books. The captain picked one up as we were together at one of the cons and it was Alice in Wonderland. And that book too presented uh, short stories and comics uh, much like this one here. So fun to enjoy around that same era. A completed uh, search maze right there. It's kind of complicated looking if you ask me. But look at the artwork on all the animals, including the frog, of course, the, the chickies and the turtle. So this is Easter with Mother Goose. And we can all remember some of our early memories around the holidays with family and looking for Easter eggs and enjoying baskets and popping open those plastic ones that I remember I did. And a lot of baseball cards back in the day, those Easter baskets. Had a lot of baseball cards, green grass inside, candies, and it was kind of like Christmas, but in spring. So there we have it, just leaving you with this great artwork, even these painted eggs right there in this great book. So thank you for time traveling with me. I hope you enjoyed this rare Charlton book that we just saw, and a happy holiday to those who celebrate. And for everyone, happy comics and be well. Mm -hmm.